Uh, good afternoon. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Simon Volt. I'm the Regional Account Director here at B Technologies. And um, thank you for joining uh, us today and learning more about our Starship Cloud solution, which we're very excited about. Uh, and we all know that you all received the email about our end of life for ship gear um, and what this all means for you in the migration path forward. Uh, so today we're going to go through a very short presentation, uh, a little bit about Starship. Um, and then I'll turn it over to Matt, uh, who will kind of do a quick demo uh, on our Starship Sage 100 integration uh, and what that would all look like for you going forward. And then we'll kind of open it up for some questions here at the end. So we'll leave some time as well to uh, answer any of those questions you might have along the way. All right, so let's get started here. So again, um, you all probably know us uh, by using Shipgear today. Uh, we appreciate your business and loyalty with us. Uh, but again, Starship has been really our flagship product really since 1989. I mean, VTech has been around since 1987. Um, Starship also participates in the uh, UPS uh, Ready Provider Program as well as the FedEx compatible solutions program, meaning that we participate in those digital connection funds with UPS or the FedEx technology incentive program with FedEx, uh, where they can pay for the solution like they may have with Shipgear, but they can also pay uh, for uh, Starship as well moving forward. Um, we've been a uh, Sage Gold development uh, partner now um, for uh, now 22 years in the making, uh, providing that advanced shipping functionality as well and you'll see that integration here momentarily that matt will take you through uh, and then basically starship having over 10,000 customers uh, in their portfolio between shipgear and starship uh, in the us and canada today <clears throat> a couple of the main features we like to kind of address here right so starship is a multi-carrier um, platform shipping application uh, today you're all using a, a world ship a fedex ship manager uh, maybe some of you uh, using a post office platform or even LTL platforms for that matter. Um, Starship is really going to consolidate all of those carriers into one application, um, providing you that one user interface uh, running up in the cloud. Um, so that way it can automatically run its updates as needed uh, and take in all those new features that we kind of enhance with our Starship cloud application. Uh, but it's also really just going to simplify things for you to kind of go to one place, get your rates, get your bill leading, get your parcel labels created and get that information back into Sage. We're also gonna help try to reduce your freight spend, right? When we look at you know, rate shopping inside the application, um, one of the carriers that we will provide you rates with is the post office. Um, so again, by providing you those discounted postage rates, you might see that you might have some lanes that might be cheaper to ship with the post office than maybe a UPS or FedEx, um, either domestic or international. Uh, so hopefully you'll be able to take advantage of those as well. And then not only do we have the integration with Sage here, um, but we also have uh, you know, e-commerce integrations that we offer today. Uh, so we can offer um, the integrations not only to Sage, but also into say a Shopify or WooCommerce uh, type of carts, Amazon, Ebays, et cetera. Um, so again, if you have any of those today that you're getting orders through, that's something definitely um, you know, my team is gonna wanna know so we can address that and kind of talk to you a little further about that and how we can help you kind of streamline that process as well. And then really just simplifying the shipping paperwork, right? So right now we see all too often where front office takes, you know, packing list out of the back, you know, they're generating a commercial invoice maybe, right? They're giving it to the shipper, shipper's trying to kind of put it with the right package, right? Starship's gonna consolidate all of that, again, into one application, print all your shipping labels, print any associated hazmat paperwork, international paperwork, you know, bill of ladings for LTL, et cetera, right? And trying to keep everything in one place, with the same shipment, so there's no confusion and, and no mistakes are being made with the paperwork itself. This is just to kind of give you a view of kind of the carriers that we support today, both in the US and Canada. Um, so again, if you see any of your carriers up here, um, we can pull in the rates through these um, uh, carriers interfaces through Starship today. Again, most of them up here are gonna be LTL. Again, we support all your main parcel carriers, you know, UPS, FedEx, DHL, post office, speedy um you know so again all of those are supported uh if you don't see any of your carriers up here right that you might be using on the ltl front um not to say we can't work with you we do have a couple three pls that might be uh an advantage for you or we can also support you through a, a bill of lading module um that we could talk about as well in a private one-on-one -on -one demo and kind of show you the advantages of that um, for your ltl needs 
And then last but not least, we have our e-commerce integrations here. The e-commerce integrations that we offer roughly about a dozen or just above a dozen uh, shopping carts and marketplaces we support today. So again, you'll see most of the major ones up here uh, that you might all be familiar with. Um, so again, if you're using any one of these shopping carts with your website um, or using Amazon, which most of us uh, seem to be doing, um, we can have a right back into these shopping carts with tracking information, updating statuses, et cetera. You might be doing that through other applications today, which is perfectly okay as well. Uh, but if you're not and you're manually uh, having to type this information back in, you definitely want to let us know so we can help uh, streamline that process as well. And also um, wanted to announce today, so as of July 1st, um, we will be having a notice go out here uh, any day, actually. Um, so you'll be the first to kind of hear about it um, formally from us. Um, so our ship gear pricing, as much as uh, the product has been great for us for the last you know, 20 some odd years, um, we also are taking an increase as well come July 1st. Um, this increase is going into effect. Um, and you'll see here what the current pricing uh, tiers look like that you all might be paying today by month uh, and what they'll look like come July 1st for all of you um, here um, uh, in July, obviously. Um, so again, just want to kind of announce that you all will be getting a formal communication via email uh, here soon. Uh, if it's not this week, you're probably next week, you'll be seeing that coming out. Um, so again, you'll see kind of uh, the promotional rates that we're going to offer to you for Starship Cloud to help get you into a product with many more features uh, and hopefully with, um, you know, a better value overall. So again, if you have questions on the pricing, by all means, please reach out to us and we're happy to answer those as well for you. And with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Matt and then Matt can take us all through a quick demo of the integration with Starship. So Matt, I'll give it to you. Okay, so on my screen right now is the actual Starship program. Um, so with Starship, kind of one of the nice things as you see here is as a shipper, I can actually work inside of the Starship program, right? So technically, I, I don't need, as Simon mentioned earlier, I, I don't need UPS shipping software, FedEx shipping software. Uh, again, with LTL type shipments, I went doing those if you're using a carrier that we integrate with. Um, a lot of them do electronic pickups, so you don't even need to go onto the carrier's website. Um, but with our ship and kind of the differences between ship gear, uh, one, you're going to see the deeper integration to phase 100. Um, so I'll kind of show you that when I bring in an order. But again, this is the main Starship screen. So being a multi-carrier, multi-mode, I'm just going to be able to process my different type of orders right through this Starship integration. Okay. So up top here is our source documents. We can pull by sales orders, invoices, or by customer. Uh, most clients, they, they do pull by the sales order number. And here is that source field. So kind of like with ship here, you have that little field where you can put in a sales order or an invoice number. Uh, Starship will do the same thing. Now, we could have a barcoded, you know, plug and play type scanner on our shipping machine and just scan in the sales order number or whatever the source document is we're using. Or as you see down below, we could also manually look those up. So even though I'm not inside a Sage or even have Sage installed on this workstation, this is still a live connection. So as customer, as the front office is adding sales orders or making changes to them, just know Starship is going to be picking up those new orders or any changes. Okay. Um, and we, we can get into, I kind of want to make this a brief demo, but please feel free to reach out. We'll, we'll do it more in depth. But, you know, of course, any of these fields we could sort, we could add, remove. But in this case, I'm just going to manually type in a sales order number. Now, normally what Starship would do is just load sales order 222. So if I typed it in or scanned it, it would automatically load it. Now, in this case, as you see, Starship didn't do that. And that's because one of the nice features with Starship is we can actually consolidate multiple shipments that are either going to the same ship to or to the by the same PO number. So in this case, instead of loading sales order 222, Starship's actually stopping and showing me, hey, you have all these other orders that are technically going to the same ship too. So I can easily select them all and consolidate them into one shipment, okay? But for the sake of demo, I'll just grab this single sales order. And as you see now, what Starship is doing, it's just bringing in all these sales order header information. And one of the differences between ship gear and Starship is now we're also bringing in all the line item detail. So as Simon mentioned earlier, that's why we can generate like commercial invoices, LTL type shipments, we can do bill rating forms, pallet labels, because we're bringing in all that additional information. Now, another difference is with ship gear, kind of limited to the fields that we can map in. With Starship, it's kind of open world where we can use, take any Starship field and map that, 
because all we're doing is simply data mapping, just kind of like ship here. Map that to a standard phase 100 field, or if you wanted to, you could even use user defined or custom fields inside of Sage. So again, we could take any of these fields, and I have some examples of what Starship is doing uh, to help automate this type of shipment. So over here, of course, is the sender. And as you see, I actually have this set up where, oh, instead of showing it's coming from V Technologies, it knows this is a blind drop shipment, automatically changed it to tractor supply company for me. Okay? And again, that's simply by doing data mapping. So that's one less thing as a shipper I don't have to worry about. My recipient information, that's the simple ship to. Uh, Starship will do address validation, we validate zip plus four, as well as the residential commercial flag. And then in transportation, this is where we're going to take your SAVE 100 ship via code, and we're going to use those to automatically tell Starship carrier service account. And as you see here, even billing type. So in this case, I'm doing a third party type shipment. Now as a shipper, I don't even have to stop and change the billing type from prepaid to third party. It's automatically selecting my customer's information from this drop down, right? Because we have a database where we can store the customer's address information as well as their account numbers. And then here it's just populating the billing account number. So we can use Starship database for that. Or again, with these mappings, I have a lot of clients that, nope, you know what, the third party account information, for example, that's going to live inside a save. It might be on the sales order, on the customer record. They have it there. We simply can map that in. Okay. So those are really just all our details of the shipments. Uh, next door are the shipping options, or here, as you see, insurance, so on and so forth. Again, these could be triggered from Sage, comes in automatically, knows we need insurance. We can even populate the declare values or base amounts automatically. Um, or these could be defaulted. So here I'm always saying, you know, always use the carrier email, email that's going to go out, bringing in an email address from Sage or multiple ones. And then here in my system, I have it set up to only use the carrier email if there's a delay or an exception. Okay. Uh, because even with Starship, I don't know how many of you how users out there are using the e-notify program with Ship here. But Starship also has that same e-notification program that allows you to create your own custom email template. And kind of now the difference with Starship's email program, and I can even show you an example, um, you're going to be able to show your customer item box detail or just the boxes with the hyperlink tracking information. Okay. So really in a live environment, kind of showing you all this, um, the first spot a shipper is going to go to is this packaging tab. And actually, let me just go jump back in here and change this to uh, prepaid because Starship also validates that third party billing account number. So if I try to process that, it would yell at me because it is a fake number. Okay. So here is where we can get into item box detail. Um, for example, I just quickly go over this, but Starship does support packaging scenarios. So in my system, it's automatically packaged this item blanket into a package that I've called blanket, all right? Um, if you don't have any items that always ship in the same type of box, you could actually have everything just come into a default box. And then from here, a shipper can simply add an additional package by clicking this icon, or this icon on each of the packaging levels is a repeat box function. So this is where I could tell Starship, you know, hey, I need two of these boxes, and it would automatically add them. So just some different options. And then from here, as a shipper, if I want to, I can move items around. So they can get into that item box detail. Uh, so for example, maybe I just want to put these dinner plates in the second box. Now with that being said, just know that this is an option. You don't have to move items and put them in boxes. Some of my clients, you know, we ship 100 line items. I don't want my shipper to have to move things around. Okay, so it's not like Starship's going to yell at you if you don't have an item in a, in a box, okay? And then this is just a database that Starship has where you could set up your own boxes, bags, bales, cartons, pallets, what have you. And the nice thing then the shipper could select those. And as you see here, it would automatically populate the dimensions. Right? And then, of course, quantities, that's units being shipped. In my system, I have it set up where it's looking at, hey, what's up on the order? And then I'm bringing what's available in inventory. So that's one option. I have other clients that, you know what, no, everything comes in at zero. My shipper will then modify the units being shipped or assign what's being shipped. Okay, so we do have a security feature that does allow the shipper to change the quantity on the shipment. And then next door is the actual weight. So again, in my system, I'm actually mapping in all the weights from the CI items inside of or tables inside of uh, Sage 100. So it's automatically calculating the weight for me. Of course, if you have a scale that's integrated, you know, throw the box on a scale, Starship will return it. Or you can even manually type in 
or adjust the weight scale. And then next door is bill weight. So that is actual carrier's dimensional calculation. So Starship Automax is gonna run that carrier calculation. And as you see here, we, we do have a difference. So when there is a difference, what Starship is doing, it, it is rate shopping at the correct dimensional weight. And then when you click ship and process, this will go to the carrier at the correct dimensional weight. So that way later on, you're not gonna receive that bill from say UPS, it's about, we sent that box out at 16 pounds, dimensionally it's 19, you know, here's the difference, okay? So again, that's the packaging. Usually the first area a shipper goes into because we're gonna to try to have all this information above all already automatically populated for them. And then after packaging, we can simply just scroll down here and this is then where we're gonna see that live rate shopping. So again, just kind of like with Shipgear where you're getting taken to the carrier's website and they're returning your rates, Starship's gonna do that same thing. So it's really basically a bridge between Sage and then your, your uh, carriers. Okay, so again, these are just live calls and we're gonna return information like business days, total days, ETAs, published list charges, contract charge is gonna be your live negotiated contract rate that you have, the, that you have with the carrier. So again, that's a live call. There's no staging of tables or anything like that. That way tomorrow, if UPS ups a fuel surcharge, you're gonna gain access to those new rates. And then apply charge simply in Starship terms. This is usually what we write back into Sage as what we wanna charge the customer. But this can also include uh, plus or minus freight rules. So Starship can do things like, you know, for example here, hey, it's a certain customer, they receive a 25% discount or even line item detail where, oh, I'm shipping this item. Hey, you know what, they're plates, they're fragile. So let's add an additional flat rate of $3 just to help cover the additional package and material we're gonna use. Okay. And then as far as rating goes, we can even automate that as well, where, hey, you know what, Starship automatically rate shop my shipment and select the least expensive or maybe the least amount of um, delivery date. Okay, so there's a lot of different options with that as well. But in this system here, I'm just gonna quickly click ship and process. Or up top here, as you see, we have shortcut keys. You can create return labels um, or just save a shipment. Maybe you want to stage it, come back to it later. Now, in your live environment, as soon as a shipper clicks ship and process, Starship is just going to simply start generating all your shipping documents. Okay, They're just going to print out. In my system, I PDF everything, so it does take a moment. And then I also do not have a thermal printer, so I use this document, which, as you see, would just print a shipping label and a packing list together. But, of course, just an option. We can send your shipping labels to your thermal printers. Um, with Starship, we can tell it where each of the documents get printed. And then the packing list, you do have options there. That could go to a thermal printer as well. Of course, print it to a laser printer, or maybe you even want to save a copy as a uh, PDF to a network share. So a lot of different options with that. So there was box one, here's box two of two. Again, this little icon, that's a certified UPS label. So you don't have to do uh, get them certified. We take care of that for you. And then with even our documents, we can customize them for you, create unlimited templates, and then each of the templates even assign printing rules. So for example, this one, Starship knows, oh, this is a blind drop shipment for Tractor Supply Company, automatically printing this special packing list that has their logo and their information. And then of course, international documents, for example, here's a shipper's letter of instruction. As you see, because we're bringing in the line item detail, all that information is gonna populate. Here's my certificate of origin, all the information's on there for me. And then even with this commercial invoice, for example, okay, everything's populated. I even customize it so it's signed and dated. So now as a shipper, I don't have to stop and fill out anything. Just grab it off the printer and we're good to go. So just to kind of repeat myself, you click shipping process, Starship generate shipping documents, and then it just takes the shipper right back to the main screen where basically rinse, repeat, grab the next order, go through that process again. And then back inside of Sage 100, when Starship is pulling by a sales order number, as soon as the shipper clicks ship and process, Starship is gonna create the invoice. So an SO invoice data entry, as you see, here's the invoice for sales order 222, the one we just shipped. And now another difference between Starship and Shiftgear, Starship is gonna drop the information directly into the correct Sage tables. So for example, under header, under tracking, Here's my individual tracking numbers, my package count, carrier weight, comments up to you. Also, because this information is in these tables, I can use their little uh, hyperlink tracking button, or maybe I want to see item to box detail. I can see that as well. Okay. And then, of course, on the totals tab, uh, freight amount. This is the Sage standard freight amount field. 
if we're going to push back a freight amount, because we can do write back rules. You know, for example, maybe you had an order that came from a website and you already charged the customer. So we can tell Starship, hey, in that scenario, do not overwrite the freight amount or write back the freight. But this would be plus or minus those freight rules. And then also with this um, version of Starship, we have a built in uh, custom write back feature. So we, we can actually take additional shipping information and send it back into, say, a saved user defined field. So for example, here, I have freight costs from Starship. I'm always pushing back my contract rate. That way, before someone updates these invoices, they can actually look, and in this case, hey, you know what, we shorted ourselves, what happened? Oh, that customer received that discount. You know what, they owe us money. This should be $85, okay? So again, that's how simple that integration is, the workflow, really what we're gonna do is streamline that for your shippers so they can ship all your different types of shipments just through the Starship user interface. Okay. Real quick, I'll just jump back into Starship. And of course, here's the dashboard program, which is a reporting tool that is included with Starship and anyone who you'd like to, can get into this. Uh, but as you see, we can see some different history, what's shipped, what's voided, so on and so forth. Uh, can crystal reports, we even include a heat map if you want to see where you know all your hot spots your customers by location and then real quick in here i'll just show you that e notify and then example for the one we just shipped there we go so again you could put your company information bring in sage field like po sales order maybe the carrier let them know you know what's shipped what's in a package hyperlink tracking information so the client can get this and then they'll track the package instead of calling you so again, that's just a quick overview. Please feel free to reach out. More than happy to schedule an in-depth call uh, with anyone so we can do a deeper dive, you know, do a discovery feed, uh, we'll talk about all the wonderful features that Starship has. Appreciate it, everyone, and I hope you have a good one.